So that takes us back to the helix. This is the one we've started, the alpha helix predicted by Pauling and Corey. If you look at this from the top, do you see how neatly packed it is? It looks like it's empty space here, but trust me, there are going to be a few atoms here. So it's perfectly packed on the other side. Along the chain, we have these hydrogen bonds from residue I to residue I plus four. And it turns out there are exactly 13 atoms if we count all of them per turn. There is a nomenclature for that. Um, to specify helices, we typically, we occasionally call them NM helices, where N is the number of residues between adjacent hydrogen bonds and M the number of residues per, sorry, atoms per turn. So the alpha helix would be what I would call a 413 helix. Nobody calls that 14, it's always the alpha helix. But telling you that, that would seem to indicate that there is more than one helix, right? That's true. They're not at all as common. That this is probably 98% of the helices, or 95 at least. But you could imagine taking this spiral and twisting it harder. So instead of having four residues between hydrogen bonds, what if I only had three? This is a so-called 310 helix. Let's draw it there. 310. We see that occurring in proteins now and then. Um, the one interesting thing is that you have, here we have a spiral of the side chains, but in this case, since it's exactly three residues per turn, we're gonna have all the side chains line up on top of each other. It's exactly 120 degrees between them. Here is 100 degrees between residues, so 3.6 residues per turn. This is not at all as advantageous. You can almost guess here that things are gonna be too packed on the inside here, things will start to clash, and I've had to put quite a lot of strain. But there are a few cases where this will be advantageous, and I might show you that when we talk about membrane proteins. You could also imagine doing the opposite. Take that helix and unwind it a bit to give it more room. That will lead to this helix, which is called a 516 helix, or a pi helix. Pi helix is a more common name. And this is the opposite. It's a bit too unwound here, so we've had to put a bit of strain on it. And in particular, in the very center of here, there aren't really enough atoms. It's almost a bit of vacuum there. So that is even less favorable than 310. You should know your alpha helix, and you should at least know that there is a helix called 310. But if you had to take your bet on a helix in a protein, it's going to be alpha helix. I've only worked with 310 helices throughout my career, and I've seen pi helices, but never really used them.